Welcome to Super Fast Taurus. Welcome new viewers and to my creep, welcome back. I am so excited to offer you a brand new show that I hope you will enjoy. This show features three main segments, the first of which is The Super, where I will always talk about MTG Cube stuff, in exception to today's video. And I apologize for the length of today's super. This will be the only time it is this long. The next we have the fast. And in the fast, I will briefly explain what my next project is going to be. And this gives me the space to experiment with small little fun videos. And in the final segment, we have the tortoise. And in the tortoise segment, we'll go over five cards. Five cards I like for cube. And we start this episode with the meme of the day. Welcome to the first super topic of this series. But first, I must admit that I was actually going to record a completely different topic before this. And in the 11th hour of the project, I scrubbed it. I don't think it was good enough for you. And I wanted to bring something real to the table about me. I decided that I wanted to discuss what my creep means to me. If you're wondering what my creep is, what a creep is, or who a creep is, I'll let you in. First of all, my creep is my subscriber base, the people who support and enjoy my content. They are the people who keep me going. These are the people who I talk with on Discord. These people are my friends and family, and all together took a chance on my channel, you, the viewer. Why do I call all my awesome subscribers a creep? Well, that answer is quite simple. A group of tortoises and torti in nature are called a creep. And for my first super topic, I want to share with you my vision and dream for this channel. And in order to do any of that, I gotta take you way back to the beginning of my YouTube life. I remember getting into the craze of YouTube when it was popular, and I got into my shows that I enjoyed watching like Equals 3 and Smosh, and there was a variety of others but those are the two biggest ones that you possibly know as well. This was back in the days when YouTube was in the wild west of creative content to entertain them. Before YouTube was even a business platform at all, and before when advertisements became an important figure in YouTube's existence. And this was when hitting a million views was the big dream for all YouTubers. When a million views got your channel on the news, on TV, would show off your channel or video and talk about your millionth view or your millionth subscriber. And when everybody was craving that five minute video to come out or that few second glimpse of glory where they had their 15 minutes of fame. This was the crazy life YouTube has had. In this spot is where you'll find me eating up all the excitement of the time. I was young. YouTube was going strong. That these were videos we wanted to share with our friends. These are videos that we talked about with our friends. They became a part of our lives. We emotionally connected with the fun that we had while watching these videos. Eventually, this is where I want my YouTube videos to go, is into that realm of excitement for you to want to talk to your friends about. This was the golden age of YouTube where we were excited for that five minute video by that one creator to come out. And sure, I was into Magic the Gathering at this time, but Magic content on YouTube was not really existent at this point in time. I wanted the confidence to build my own channel. I wanted to create my own videos. I had no vision. Then one day, the Magic Show arrives on YouTube, starring Evan Irwin. Then the Command Zone comes out. Then Tolarian Community College comes out. And the Mana Source and MTG Headquarters. And not only that, these shows got popular enough where YouTube exploded 
with magic content all over the place. I mean, exploded all over YouTube. And the way I listed these channels are probably not in the correct order. It's just how I remember them. And these videos, these creators were creative for magic at the time. They were entertainment, they were fun. It was a new landscape that we had and we were treading upon. I was subscribed to all these channels because I was fascinated with this world of magic that we lived in. I have become an MTG YouTube addict. I was an emotionally fed consumer for MTG YouTube content. Well, at this time, I was playing standard magic at my local game shop for standard events and I loved it all. I loved drafting, I loved playing sealed, and I got into EDH. I got into the birth of the format of EDH and got enthralled into everything. And the social aspect just kept me engaged with the formats. Because you're always playing different people, you're always playing different games, you're always having different conversations, you're always helping someone build a deck, always helping someone along their path to becoming a better magic player. This was my jam! I was in my element. And at this time, there was so much content, there was way too much content for one person like me to endure, and I went for everything. You could say, I was that kid who was captured by the big boom, the big bang of magic when it accelerated and got super popular, and it was really into everything you talk about. I didn't play standard as much, but I still played standard. I played Commander a lot. I always waited for every pre-release and drafted every time I could. My life was magic. And honestly, from my own perspective, that was pretty pathetic. Everywhere else I could have grown as a person stalled because I was enthralled into one game. And everything about me was about being better at that game, becoming stronger in the game of magic. Everything was magic. And it was all me. That was my development. And through all this time, I've witnessed a lot of channels coming and going from YouTube. I was watching all the regular YouTube stuff, always looking for newer YouTubers to watch because I needed more. I was completely addicted to magic on YouTube. But one day, I was struck in the heart pretty hard. I was emotionally destroyed by the content I loved so much. When I watched Magic the Gathering channels get destroyed by burnout or people losing interest in the game overall, and the worst in all of this was watching other creators cannibalize other channels for their own game instead of thinking of a community of strong people, strong creators. We had people fighting for everything that they wanted their channel to be. And they struck hard, creating a toxic community of emotional people distressed. And I watched it all. I couldn't even turn a blind eye to any of this. It was grinding everybody's emotions who was involved or loved magic content on YouTube. Everybody was jumping from thread to thread, from Twitter and Reddit and other sites that I never heard of or been on before because content creators are creating content caring about whose side they were on no matter which side it was a mess of drama these were dark times and these were also dark times for the content creators I seriously lost all the fire for the game I loved because of these creators for about two years I stopped watching magic content on YouTube. I honestly lost faith in the strength of the community. I lost confidence in the community. I could not let all these creators affect me anymore because I was tired of the rhetoric these creators would produce, if that tells you anything. And that was the end result. Now I'm not covering everything that happened, I'm just glossing over what happened and also notice, I'm not telling you who these channels are. I'm just talking about my experiences from the channels I've watched. My mental capabilities could not handle all the BS flying out from over 100 creators on YouTube. 
I eventually unsubscribed from almost every magic content creator there was. I had to step back just to realize myself. I was not in a good emotional state for all this jazz. I had to step away from YouTube because my emotional well-being couldn't handle the drama and my mental capabilities couldn't handle all the BS. It was just too much to watch. And since then, for about two years, I stopped watching YouTube. During all this time, when I left the magic community, I started focusing on my cube. I have given up on everything magic from Commander, Standard, Sealed, Pre-Release, buying booster boxes, from buying booster packs. I focused on my cube. And so with my cube, I just simply decided that I was going to focus on the best times and the most happiest of times that I had playing with magic. And I was going to put that into my cube. And I became a different kind of addict. So much so, I, I studied what I could understand of game theory. I studied and broke down game design. I put the work into set design. I studied so much on how to build my cube in different ways. This became a problem at home. I, I was unfocused from my daily duties at home and my basic responsibilities were ignored. At this time, my playgroup was only my family. My, my entire family learned to hate playing Magic against me because I was too good at the game compared to everybody else for how much I put into the game of Magic. This came to a point where my passion for Magic went from a huge flame to a tiny spark. And with all my might, I held onto that spark. And I knew in the future, it could ignite again. Then one day, Life Begins at 20 created a channel and started uploading videos. And I caught on to it quick. I was hooked and fascinated with the channel. His channel created ways to play magic with my wife in different ways. And I was completely interactive and submerged in his content. And it was to the point where I could easily say I was his biggest fan. Or one of them. I mean, he really had a good following. And at the peak of his channel's career, he suffered from burnout. Luckily, I was talking to him after this happened. I got to talk about some of the choices he made while filming and making his videos. And talk about the overwhelming life of a YouTube star from this man and his experiences. And in this part is where you and I meet today for this topic. We meet the beginning of my YouTube career. See, in this time frame, my little spark for magic was reignited. Because at this time, my son started bringing friends over from work to play games of Commander. All noob players. But my son, he got into magic again himself. And wanted to play and started bringing friends over. And this is where the meat of this topic begins. All his friends were noobs. They had no idea how to build a deck. And in my honesty, I tried directing them at Tolarian Community College in the Command Zone for help on building decks. They couldn't connect with the Command Zone because there was just too much being offered there. And they couldn't click with the professor because they were not in his targeted audience. Yeah, they loved watching the Commander's Quarters deck decks. But it really didn't teach him how to build a deck. And I would be sitting there on different days of the week talking to these friends, telling the same thing over and over again, and inspiration hit me and found a way to reach everybody. So I created my scope how to build a commander deck video, explaining how to build a commander deck. And that video was just for my friends and it clicked with them. And I know this video is boring. I've watched it many times myself, but the video got like 90 views in a few days and it ha I believe it's up to 107 views since then. The craziness is, is that I got subscribers out of this video. So I started creating more videos for my playgroup and as I got more videos up I got more subscribers. So I started working on different projects to see how they'd stick. Like my Merfolk video that was just a joke video and still I got more subscribers. My brain exploded when I got my first several subscribers. Every time I get a subscriber, I'm just astonished and amazed because people I did not know 
We're enjoying my content. And in a conversation with one of my original subscribers, we were talking about Commander, who I dedicated the video to. He asked about my Astro deck in a conversation we were having and asked if I would make a video of it. And I told him, sure, I'll do it. And I did. And it's one of my most explosive videos to date. And people loved it. So I created another deck tech right after. Then I decided before I get too similar as every other deck tech on YouTube, I'll try something new, something ballsy. So I created my Jurassic Park themed commander deck. I decided to take a risk with my Jurassic Park video and used clips from the film. And at this point, I thought I could lose my channel for taking this risk. And people loved it. They loved the idea. But I did it to show my viewers I'm willing to take risks. And I kept progressing. I'm more creative with my videos than I thought I could have been, and it's been paying off every time. And what I want to get at is, uh, gaining subscribers is nothing I'm going to take for granted. People who I don't know who start subscribing to my content are people that I start communicating with. Starting with the video. My subscribers also reminded me that they wanted Cube videos. So I made videos for Cube and they loved it and I will make more of it. So here from now on my channel is going to be Commander and Cube focused and because Commander and Cube harmonize with each other and they both go together. I know Commander's big on other channels. I know Cube is big on other channels. But Cube and Commander is my niche. It's what I'm good at. And here I want to thank my wife who tolerates my YouTube hobby. My son. I appreciate him for bringing magic back into the house. Back into my life. And to my dad, who constantly is giving me positive feedback for doing what I love. And my playgroup for inspiring me to make more videos. And I will never forget you, the viewer, who make my channel inspiring and as amazing as it is. Everybody I just talked about is a vehicle in helping making this channel grow. I want you all to know that you make my channel's experience possible. I really do appreciate all of you who believe in my channel. I appreciate you all beyond belief for the support you give my channel. And in my limitations, I promise to always give you my best. To sum up the super, my vision for the channel is to create cube and commander content for you all and bring you entertainment value as I grow more and more. I want you to be able to see my progression with every video I make. Now, my dream for the future is to grow bigger as a connected community with all of you. I want to become an amazing channel for you to enjoy. Go to your friends and talk about what you saw. That is my dream. I want to become the person you talk to your friends about because you all deserve it. And that's just super. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell if you have not already. Because you will not want to miss my next upcoming Commander Deck Tech. Featuring Arkelos Lagoon Mystic. This deck is full of fun shenanigans. And it is going to be our new channel deck. God, I love being a turtle! For today's officially not sponsored product, deodorant, any brand will do. Plan on attending FM? Don't find yourself in a Ritz. Apply deodorant to your pits. People do care about the smells, so be kind. Think of others as well. And are you needing that gift for the holidays? For that special magic player in your life? Don't strife. Get them that hygiene holiday collection from Old Spice. And take it from me, I love receiving these on Christmas Day. You are watching Super Fast Tortoise. In the tortoise section, we'll always go over the five cards I like for cube. And today's cards are from the Commander Legends set. Starting with Quain Itinerant Meddler. Costing only a blue and a white. Power and toughness, one, three. Legendary creature, Rabbit Wizard. That has 
tap. Each player may draw a card. Each player who drew a card this way gains one life. I like this card for cube because it gives the I don't care what you have in your hand mentality that comes in a control deck. The life gain ability is not even an issue. Your opponent's life will always advance with yours because you get the benefit as well. His converted mana cost is very cheap, making him flexible for multiple strategies from Spells Matters to Blue-White Control, Bant Voltron, also Jeskai and Esper Aggro strategies. He is strong, unlike our next card on the list. Amareth the Lustrous. This Bant Dragon is a fun card for low-powered cubes. It fits decks from Zoo Creatures to Enchantment Matters and Super Friends. Costing 3 generic and a green, white, and blue, this 6-6 legendary dragon has flying and a really fun body of text. That reads, Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it shares a card type with that permanent, like lands, planeswalkers, enchantments, etc., you may reveal the card and put it into your hand. This card is great, and is a great addition to the beginner's cube and is a good flying powerhouse. This card is truly lustrous. And next, we have a less lustrous and more devious card, Demonic Lore. This enchantment costs two generic and a black, and reads, when Demonic Lore enters the battlefield, draw three cards. And at the beginning of your end step, you lose two life for each card in your hand. This card is just amazing. I know the drawback is horrifying to read, but this card in cube is fantastic for the Rakdos, Grixis, and Mardu aggro decks. The card advantage is too good to just ignore, and the decks that this card fits in burns through creatures and kill spells too quickly for the life loss to really matter at all. And most likely we'll see play in decks with our next card. Roxasha Debaser this card is nuts, costing 4 generic and 2 black. This is a 6-6 six, six Mad Kitty Meow Meow Demon. He reads, when he attacks, you can put target creature card from the defending player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. First of all, that is a really fun ability, and it triggers before blockers are declared. And secondly, there is more text. Coming in with a new ability from Commander Legends, we have Encore. And for 6 generic and 2 black, you can use this new ability from your graveyard. Encore reads, Exile this card from your graveyard. For each opponent in the game, create a token copy of Mad Kitty Meow Meow. These tokens attack this turn if able. They gain haste. Then sacrifice the kitty tokens at the next end step. Use this ability at sorcery speed. Oh my goodness. This card is nuts. This adorable cat demon will fit in all that. He's good in Golgori decks, Rakdos, Demir, and Orzhov decks. You will find him fitting in three color strategies as well. And if you play cube like we do at my home in round robin group games, this mad kitty should be in your cube too. He's not broken, just pure fun. And you know what card is unfun? And on the top of this list, we have Hole Breacher. Costing only two generic and a blue. A 3-2 Merfolk Pirate. He has flash and a really annoying body of text, which reads... If an opponent would draw a card, except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, instead, you get a treasure token. Are you mad that Wizards printed this card? Well, good news. This card is really good for the control deck matchup. Yes, this creature is nimble, but it pushes for slower games to move faster. It pushes for one player to win quicker than the other. But that is no problem, and on point. So let slow games be gone, and big plays win cons come out faster. I'm not saying this card is a catch-all, but is good against the control decks, and that is why I think it is good for cube. Aye aye mateys, I hope you enjoyed these five cards I like for cube. So tell me, what was your favorite part of today's video? Today's episode? Leave your responses in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'd appreciate it a lot if you hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, so you know when I post new content just for you. And thank you, my creeps, for watching today's episode. And just to let you know, I have exciting things planned for the future. Thank you for watching. Until next time, play wise, my friends, and see you next time.